Hi, this is Faith McDonald from the Institute on Religion and Democracy from the International Religious Liberty Program and the Church Alliance for a New Sudan. And I'm here with Reverend Santino Bol Akok and with Fran Boyle, the Director of Connecting Lives International Ministry. And they're going to talk about how they got to know each other and how they have been working together ever since for children who are in school in Aquak Rock in Western Awil, Bar El Ghazal, South Sudan. <laughs> Go ahead, Fran. Let's hear from you first. Okay. Uh, it was John Eibner, the president of Christian Solidarity International, that told me about Santino. This was during the war and during our days of advocacy for South Sudan and demonstrations in Washington. Um, Dr. Eibner told me there is a pastor assisting us in uh, repatriating the children we've bought back from slavery in the north to the area of Western Awil. And uh, he would love to go to school in Nairobi. And um, he's very deserving of help. And uh, you're Anglican, he's Anglican. I think you should know him, friends. So he gave me the um, information on how to reach Santino. And I contacted him, and we met in Nairobi. I don't know exactly when, but it was probably within six months of the time John gave me his information. We, I, I contacted him, and we met in Nairobi. Mm, great. Yeah. Well, um, Santino, so you had already been working with uh, Dr. John Eibner, right? Can you tell people a little bit about what kind of thing you were doing? Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. I mean, uh, well, I just want to talk you a bit about how I came to work with John Abner, the director of Christian Soldat International. Uh, when the Christian Soldat International got to South Sudan, the first area, the first area they went to was my uh, area, and the reason why they went there was because the area was hit badly hit by the the Northern Sudan government. They used to uh, up, up the Darfurian who were to come and do a lot of atrocities in the area. And when I started uh, planting churches in 1995 uh, was the year that uh, a lot of atrocities were actually done by the the Khartoum government arming up the, the Darfur to come and uh, enslave, come and burn churches down, do a lot of atrocities. So when John Ebner uh, came to come and uh, and confirm this uh, really thing are happening on the ground. He came and he, he met uh, with me, and I showed him around. I told him these are the things that are, uh, were actually happening uh, in the area. I took him some of the churches that were burned down by uh, this Arab slave, uh, red lady, uh, we call the Arab slave uh, raiders. That's what uh, they, they are called. Uh, they come and and kill and enslave children and take the women back to slavery. Uh, when John came, he confirmed these are the things actually uh, happening, uh, are at, uh, taking place in the area. And uh, I happened to work alongside with John Ebner, uh, mm -hmm. giving him a lot of information until whatever they deem back the children from slavery. Uh, I was to be the counselor preaching them the word of comfort and word of God, not to lose hope. And I told them, this is not the end of the world. God loves you. No matter what uh, the circumstances, the difficulties you went through, God is still on your side. Amen. Um, well, you, you were doing that with the children um, who had been redeemed out of slavery. Um, but let's also... Um, uh, we'll talk in a few minutes about your message of forgiveness to the Darfurians as well. But first... Um, Fran, can you um, talk a little bit about what what needed to happen next for the children and what you got involved mm -hmm, in with mm -hmm. Santino? Well, unfortunately, though, the families meant well when um, these children were bought, brought back to the community. In the past, families would have absorbed these children back into their families, but the war had left them all destitute. Everything had been wiped out family life and uh, resources and people could not take care of their own families so to take back relative children where the father had been killed prior to the enslavement and the mother had been killed as well or taken into uh, slavery 
Uh, some of these women did not come back alive, but um, if the children came back alone, there, there really weren't that many families that really could take them in, even though they may have wanted to. So what happened was, as I visited the area with Santino, after we met in Nairobi, within a year, I would made a trip up with Santino to see the situation. And what we saw were all these children just kind of hanging around, fending for themselves. And they were easy to recognize, very depressed and really bad condition. So I said to Santino, we've got to do something for these children. We, we must start something. And Santino agreed. And on a trip back, we rounded up 62 of these children mm -hmm. and started this school for them. We had already started a clinic prior to that. That was the first thing we did. First step was to start a clinic, which was needed by the entire region. The next step was to round up these children and start, and really, such as it was, it was a few Tuchels and a couple of women that were willing to take care of these children, feed them to start mm -hmm. with, and then, then from there we rounded up some teachers. But we started with these 62 children and uh, from now it has grown to 350 children, wow. but it was these uh, 62 redeemed children that uh, we started the school with. That was mm. our primary focus. Great. Well, mm. we, we there's two more things that we need to talk about. One, um, Santino, I want you to address this issue because I work today with many wonderful people from Darfur who now understand that Khartoum used them against their fellow black African Sudanese who were in South Sudan. Um, so uh, for you to tell about the message that you have given them, um, but and then let's end by just letting people know that there's a need to help um, to, to keep the school going and to keep the clinic going. And um, that anybody who would like to bless you all in that way, um, we would really love to have that happen. So Santino, first tell us about um, how you have reached out to the Darfurians and how God made that possible, how they ended up right in your area. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, when we, uh, this idea of uh, setting up an orphanage uh, school came to pass, uh, we'll, uh, we thought that these children, as uh, my partner, who is really playing a very crucial role here in United States of America, uh, fine ball, uh, we round up and brought uh, 62 kids. Uh, we were the former, uh, uh, former dim children, uh, dim children in the, in the, uh, by the Khartoum government, because Khartoum government was misleading the, the Darfurian, because uh, what they were telling them, they looked at it, that was the right thing, but later they were regretting that.